Hi YouTube. This is Belinda. It is um, February the 9th. And um, I got a few things to tell you guys and I'm going to make it as quick as I possibly can. But it might be, this video might be a little more uh, lengthy than average. Just got a few things to tell you because I haven't been on here in a little bit. Um, first things first, um, I did go to a couple doctors this week. And uh, one of them did happen to weigh me. So this week I am down to 292 pounds. Yay me. Um, for those of you who don't know or watch my video for the first time, I started this uh, journey in um, the late, late October um, in the first seminar and then actually started being serious about trying to lose the weight after my first pre-op appointment and I weighed 320. So as of today, I've lost 29 pounds. So that's pretty good. And I only had to lose 16 for the um, the 10% before surgery. So I've already surpassed that, thank goodness. Um, another f the, one of the next things I want to talk about was um, the doctors. Yesterday, I went to a dermatologist. Uh, appointment was at 145. Got there early, and they didn't get me back there until after 2, like 2.05. Then I sat back there for 25 minutes. At 2.35, they finally came back there. After I'd already done called, my sleep center consult people and told them I was going to be late because I had an appointment at 3 o'clock right after that one. In Maryville. I live in Knoxville, which is a half an hour away. So they made me late. But the bad news at the um, dermatologist was that um, they put me on... I'm going to try to show these to you. There are two different kind of sprays for the psoriasis that I have in my ears and on my scalp. It is Kenalog. Can you see, can you see that or not? It's a spray that I have to spray on my scalp like so. <laughs> and then they gave me another one called Clobex. Um, also a spray. <laughs> I gotta do each of these sprays twice a day for the next three weeks and if that does not work and I still have the psoriasis then this was the bad news part is if it's still the same and I go back on March 14th then they're going to inject needles into my scalp where the psoriasis is to try to get it under control <laughs> and they'll that will have to be done every six to eight weeks. So no, I'm not very happy about that. All right, we're almost three minutes, so let's move this on. Uh, the next appointment I had, like I said, was at three o'clock. That was with the Sleep Study Center in Maryville, uh, Tennessee, which is a pulmonary uh, center. Um, I got there, and I pretty much kind of figured I was going to have sleep apnea. I just, you know, I just figured I'd have it. Well. I have it, but here's a list of other things that I had with it. Um, I have moderate COPD. I have delayed sleep phase syndrome. I have restrict restrictive lung disease and severe severe obstruct, obstruct, obstructive sleep apnea. I'm going to be on, have to uh, be put on a CPAP machine after they do my sleep study on March 1st. And they said I could probably get off of it after surgery and I lost some weight. But the other scary thing is, is I have um, a narrowing of my esophagus, which apparently um, they found out was hereditary. Because my mom has it and my granddad has it. And a few other people. So not much I could do about that. Eventually I'll probably have to have my um, esophagus straightened. But the scary part is I have a blockage, a 95% blockage of from right here, I guess up here, all the way down my throat. And most people, when you put a tongue depressor in them, in their mouth, and then they go, ah, well, you can see their uvula bouncing back and forth. Well, he done that to mine, and he couldn't see anything. He said he could barely see the opening to the to my throat down, you know, down in there. He barely could see that. So, um, he said that was going to make it very difficult for the anesthesiologist to intubate me during any kind of surgery, much, you know, much less the weight loss surgery. So, you know, sorry, that wasn't good news either, you know. And so uh, they put me on, uh, you guys may have heard this, called melatonin. It's supposed to help you make you sleep. And then they put me on this lovely little 
uh, thing right here. <laughs> it is Spiriva. It's a one-time dose uh, for breathing that I got to take now every day. You open this, then you open that. You see there? Little bitty green peel goes right in here. And then you do that, and that puts it down in there real good. Then you close that. And then you take this little green button here and you, you push it. And you open it back up, put it in your mouth, and breathe in for 10 seconds. And what that does is uh, when you shut this and you push that, that, that pokes a hole or several holes in the capsule so that you breathe in the dust. That's basically what that does. But now I'm on that once a day. Um, it's a lot of stuff. I was very overwhelmed. I mean, he told me a lot of bad things. You know, not any of it was any good. Uh, my lung capacity is like 58%. Uh, didn't expect it to be that bad, but it is. Um, but I can handle it. I'll take care of it with the Lord's help. You know, I'll make it through it. I'll be fine. But that's everything the doctors. Um, my next topic is going to be... Um, N. H. Raven. Her name is Christina. I really love her to death. She's a sweet lady. She was talking about on one of her last to second or third videos about how she wanted to get the Wii and do the Just Dance. Well, people, uh, this past weekend, uh, we already had the Xbox and we already had the Wii system itself. So we went out and bought the Just Dance 1 and the Dance Dance Revolution 2 that goes to Xbox and another adventure game, which is really cool. But let me tell you, if you're not used to working out or getting a lot of activity, such as myself, I bust, excuse my language, I sweated my ass off on these videos. And it was only for 10 minutes the first couple days. The last time we did it, me and my best friend, my mom and my sister, my, sorry, my uh, goddaughter, we did it for an hour and I swear to you, I thought I was dying. I mean, it was hilariously fun. We had a great time doing it, and we're going to keep doing it, you know, at least three or four times a week. And it's, it's really enjoyable. You have fun. It's but when you're a big person, you just don't realize how uncoordinated and how uncomfortable that type of dancing makes you feel, or at least it has does for me. So, Christina, when you get that, take your time, girl. Don't bite off more than you can chew, because <laughs> that's what I did, and I was hurting the next day. But it is fun. So, thumbs up. Get both of them if you can. Um. Let's see. And I was thinking, the more weight you lose before surgery, does that mean less pain you'll have? Because they want to pump as much gas into your stomach. Or not, not gas, I mean air. So I was wondering. Whew, almost eight minutes. Um, Trudy, I can't remember your screen name. I know it's R Ontario, R and Y, something like that. If you guys know her, she was talking about watching this video. Um, not video, sorry, TV series. It's called My 600 Pound Life. Yes, Trudy, I did watch it. And yes, I did see the grocery restraints scene. And I would like to think if that had been me, I would have jumped up and said, you know what? F you, buddy. You know what? Who cares? But I'm going to tell you real quick about an experience I had. Um, I was going to my PCP. I was leaving the building. And uh, of course, I took the elevators. This is when I was like 333. And one of the employees, I know he's an employee because he had a name tag on he came up behind me and said, don't you really think it'd be better if you took the stairs? You'd be a lot healthier if you did. Now, typically, I would have said something to somebody like that. But I've never really been attacked like that in a public place. So I was in shock. So I didn't say anything. I just laughed and smiled and got on the elevator. But when I got on the elevator, I realized what had happened and started talking to one of the other employees. And I was cussing and I was going off and she couldn't believe what he had done. So I called up there every day for two weeks until he got, um, he didn't get fired, but he got some time off without pay because of what he did. Because I remembered his name and his badge number. <laughs> um, so I, I, that, that grocery scene, I've had that happen to me, so I know. Anyway, um... I've got a lot of appointments coming up in the next couple weeks. On the 16th, I got Dr. Cox for the psychiatrist. I have um, a sleep study on March 1st. Uh, then I'll get the results on the 19th, and they'll give me my CPAP. And then, let's see, my trusty big calendar with all my stuff in it. Um, let's see. I was supposed to go to a support group tonight. Didn't get to. Uh, I have to have four teeth oral surgery on February 24th taken out 
and then I have uh, Dr. Ray on the 22nd, and I have the upper GI and all the lab work and all that pre-op stuff on the 23rd. And uh, that's pretty much up until then. I don't have much else, but um, that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, I don't have anything else to say, and I've went over 10 minutes, and I really hate that I've done that, so please forgive me. Um, I kind of also wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, uh, Rosemary and uh, Becky and Leslie and Banded Wendy and um, a bunch of all you guys that have been supporting me. I so appreciate it. Everybody has, but thank you all. Um, just everybody have a, a, a blessed day, blessed night, blessed afternoon, depending upon whenever you watch this. And remember, things can always be worse and there's always somebody worse than you. So take what you have. Don't take it for granted and move on and live day by day. All right, everyone. Bye.